Welcome back to Library Trust YouTube channel. Today, I start with learning how to make this beautiful, elegant detail on a blouse. Okay, it's a flounce detail and it's really beautiful. So, you can have it on one side like this or on both sides of the front bodies. This is something you like to learn. Kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, so making this design is actually very simple. I'm going to be cutting like a template on a paper before we start transferring it to our fabric. So there are several ways you can do this, but I'm going to try to show the method that is quite simple and is going to be economic. It's not going to consume too much fabric. So you can either cut this in a bias form, in a straight form, or you cut it in form of a flounce or even a, a, a spiral flounce or even a flare. But I'm going to be cutting this in a straight form. The only difference you can get is that cutting a straight form can make it flat. But we're going to be adding a crinoline to it. So this is going to prevent it from just lying flat so that it can bounce well for us. Okay. So to do this, like I said now, I'll be I'll be drafting on the paper before transferring to my fabric. So I have this illusion bodies that I already drafted. There's a tutorial on how to do this on the channel if you don't know how to. And this is where I'm going to be placing this design. So the first thing is for you to first note how the design is going to go. Okay, the lines, the way the design. Okay, you want it to the, the placement actually the way you want the placement to be. So you need to note that. So after noting this, now you need to take your tentative measurement of the length that you will need. So if you look at this picture, if you look at the thumbnail very well, you notice that. We have around six design on each side so six on this side and six on the other side so i'm just going to be doing just one side for the purpose of this tutorial so everything we did on this first side is going to be replicated exactly on the other side so the first thing has like the same length okay it's just it's just the placement is just different but the length is similar so now and if you as you can if you can see it just goes this design goes beyond the shoulder points a bit so i'm just going to be extending my shoulder points like this you can see i place it one inches one inch above my shoulder points and then i'm trying to measure where i want the first one to be which is around here so the length i'll be using for this is going to be around 12 inches and like i said the first one comes like this and then the second one is just a bit lower but being a bit lower means that it's also going to be longer on the hemline. We'll understand this by the time we start placing it. So I'm going to be using the same measurements for the first three. 12 inches for both of them. So the 12 inches, if I place the first one like this, then the second one will be placed maybe from here. Then you can see that we have a sh is shorter for by around one and a half inches. But this short one and a half inches is going to replace it here and then it's going to extend it for me. And then the third one, once I place it also, whatever shortage that I have here is going to be placed on the hem. So for the fourth one, okay, the first one I'm going to be using around 10 inches because it's shorter than the first three that we have. So the length that I'm going to be using for the short one is first one is going to be 10 inches before I now manipulate the last two how I want it. So you just need to see the picture of the design that you want to create and then just try to recreate what you have. You don't even have to copy copy it verbatim. You can just spice it up anyhow you want it. So now I have this 12 inches as my tentative length measurement and then I'm going to measure that on my fabric. So to do that, if you are doing this on your fabric, assuming you are cutting directly on your fabric, you will just put your fabric on fold. And like I said, I'm cutting it in a straight form, but you can also cut it on bias for it to roll very well. Okay, so for the last two now, they run all the way to the to the waistline in a straight form. So now, depending on how you want it, like I said, I'm just going to measure how straight I want it to be. So it's going to be straight from here before it's now bent 
to meet the the star line that we have here so from this from the waist area now i want it straight so i'm measuring around four inches upward before i now bend it towards the armhole area like that so now to to cut out this design is going to be a bit different from the one i did earlier and then the length that i'm using for this so i'm cutting the fifth design now so here let me just label this one to three this is one to three this is the fourth design and now i'm cutting the fifth design so to cut this fifth design i'm going to put my fabric on fold by two also and then the length the length i'm working with for this is going to be around 11 or 12 inches again you should measure this on your fabric on your if you have a dress form or a mannequin this become easier for you because you can actually picture what you want to get so i'm doing this I, ideally i'm supposed to have just pin this on my dress form so that i can get the picture of what i want but i just want to do it manually like this just in case if you have people that don't have a dress form so that it can be easy for them to just come up with this design also but if you have a dress form it makes the work easier for you like i said so now you measure where you want this design the length you want for this particular design and for me i'm using around 11 inches so here on the hemline I'm going to measure like one inch including seam allowance okay because it's a bit narrow here because before it's broadens so the four inches that we marked earlier that place is narrow so from that place now I'm marking that four inches and then here I'm going to measure one inch or one and a half inches okay because of seam allowance because I'm going to be sewing it close both up and down so now I'm going to measure that one and a half on the four again and then I'm going to make this into a straight line. So after making this into a straight line, I'll go back here now and measure my ideal four inches that I've been using earlier for all the design. So from there, again, I'll take my cuff and then I'll connect it. So from this cuff now, I'll connect it to this point. So while connecting it, I'll make sure that I through this place because you don't want any part too sharp. So you have it like that. And I'll take my scissors now and then I'm going to cut this design out also. So it's not difficult. It's just time consuming because you have a lot to do. Okay. But it's very simple to make and it's elegant. So it's worth the effort so now i'm cutting this out now and then i'm just going to label this five that's the fifth design and then you write cut two that's main lining main fabric and lining if you are doing one side and then if you are doing for both it means you have to cut four of it okay so now i have five designs now the last one to cut now is the shortest one which is going to be at the midpoint the length i'm going to use for this is going to be around nine inches so the first thing now is to make a straight line so i'm making this straight line and then i'm going to measure out nine inches that's the length i'm using is the shortest so it may not even be up to nine depending on what you want anyways so now this is the total length that i want so i'm just really need that this design is not going to go beyond these nine inches so again because i want the style for the fifth and sixth one to be similar i'm going to measure that narrow point of four inches from my stopping point upwards and there i'll measure one and a half inches may not be up to one and a half you don't want it this wide like this and then make it into a straight line then here i'm going to measure the four inches width that i've been using earlier and then i'm going to take my curve driller now and connect it like this so after connecting it you don't want any sharp edge so here i'm just going to throw it there and then you cut this out so you can see this is like a free hand i'm just cutting this you can follow any shape or design that you want but this is a requested video so i just want it to be as close to what i have on the thumbnail as possible okay so now here you write cut to if you are doing for half like me 
and then if you are doing for the both side you cut four and then this is going to be our sixth design so now i have all my templates here the next thing now is to bring in my fabric and cut this on my fabric okay so i'm using this satin fabric for this project so now like i said depending on the amount of fabric you have to work with you can cut this in bias form if you are cutting it in bias form it seems to fold your fabric in a triangular way like this you can see how i'm folding it like in form of a triangle and then you place your pattern on it open it out now and then you trace it out but this is going to consume more fabric than just cutting it straight which is what i'll be doing anyway so if you have enough fabric you can cut it this way i hope you can see what i'm doing well so this fabric is hold on bias and then you just place your template on it like this and then you cut out this hack shape that you have but if you don't have enough fabric like me i'm just going to be putting it on food just the way i cut it on my paper and then i'll put my fabric here now i'll pin it and then cut out this design so now for each of them the labels that i have is going to assist me in knowing the amount that i need to cut out that's why you need to label them okay so now for the first to three i know i'll cut six for one side then 12 if i'm cutting the two sides and so on and so forth so now i'll go over to my fabric now and cut all this out because i don't want this too long then after cutting it out i'm going to add the gum stay to this so i'm adding gum stay to both the lining and fabric because the gum stay i'm working with is actually not so strong okay so i just want to show her some that i have cut out and then you can see i went ahead to add gum stay to it okay so now if you look at the picture you will notice that the hem okay so this is what i have so now if you look at the picture you notice that the hem of this design of this flounce has like a design on it so you can actually bead it on the hem but i don't i'm not going to be beading this if you want to beat this i have several tutorials on the channel on how you can apply beads to this so i'm just going to be using this this trimming that i have in between so that this trimming is just going to be by the time i turn this okay by the time i turn this house i want this trimming to just show at the edge like this so this is just to beautify it so i'm just i'm going to go over to the machine now to show us how i'm going to be adding this trimming to it to beautify it now so that we can continue okay so i'm on the machine now and i'm going to use this to show us what i'll be doing to all of the fabric so this is the main fabric and this is the lining so you can pick whichever one you want so now this curved edge part remember we have a straight part and we have a curved part this curved part that looks like hand hack is where i'll be adding this design to because that is what is going to be showing externally this straight part is what we'll be showing to our main fabric i hope we get that so now to guide me the first thing i'm going to do this is the right side of the fabric i'm going to first sew this design on the right side of the fabric as shown so i'll just place it under my machine and sew okay so now you can see i've sewn it to it i don't want this video to be too long so i just placed it on it and then i'm sewing it so after sewing it like this the next thing you're going to do now is to cover it with your lining okay so it has to match because you, you you use the same template to cut to them so you can actually sew it from this side but i advise that you sew it on this part that you already have your trimming on so that you just follow the seam line the seam line is visible here so you just follow that seam line so when you are sewing this you had your crinoline okay so i'm sewing from here and you can see my crinoline is one inch long so i'm not going to be adding it from this uh, from this narrow part because i don't want it sticking out so i'm just going to place it from anywhere that i know i'm comfortable with and then i'll sew okay so now i'm going to place this under my machine and i'll start to sew it so i'll sew small then place my crinoline and then i'm going to sew it round. so you arrange it well make sure your lining is under your fabric and don't drag your crinoline and then you sew so i'm just sewing this following the seam line that i already have 
So it's that simple. So you just need to sew it and then follow your seam line like that. So I'm sewing it and then following this hack. And then on the other side also, I'm not going to sew it to the end because I don't want my pinoli sticking out. So once I get to this part now, I'll top stitch on it. I'll cut out my crinoline and then I'm going to finish sewing everything. So once you sew it out like this and you turn it, you will see your design just at the edge here. You can see that it makes it more beautiful. So your design is just going to show at the edge. So actually you can actually sew this a bit now and then turn it because you want this other side to be neat also. But this may be a bit challenging because of the crinoline. So I'm just going to top stitch on it. So watch what I'm going to be doing. So for this part to lay flat, you can actually iron it for the purpose of the tutorial because I don't want this to long i'm just going to top stitch on it so once i top stitch on it also it's going to relax for me it's like this because of the crinoline that i have so i'm just going to top stitch very close to the end so i'm sewing it so once i top stitch on it like this it's going to relax very well for me so i'm making sure that i don't take my underneath make sure that they lay well before you top stitch on it so you can see i'm um, just bringing out the design before top stitching on it so you can actually iron this if you have a steam iron you can iron this part instead of top stitching like i'm doing but i don't have any issue with seeing the seam line so i'm just top stitching on it so after top stitching on it this is what i have you can see it's lying flat now so like i said this part also you want it to be neat so to make it neat i'm just going to be folding it over like this and then i'm going to top stitch it also i'm going to fold in the same allowance so i'm just going to be folding in the same allowance as you can see and then i'm going to stitch on it so it's that simple i'll fold in my same allowance now and stitch on it so you can see that it is neat both on both sides now so if you can just turn it like i explained earlier you can also turn it like that the objective is just to make it neat and also you can even use a serger to serge it just so that you have something very neat and nice Okay, so i'm done with this now you can see how this part is also looking neat so i've done like three of it so i'll do the rest now the same way that i've done this and then i'll bring it back to show us what we have okay, so these are our designs now i have six of them like we earlier said okay so these are the first three remember they're of equal sizes this is the fourth one this is the fifth and this is the last one so placing them is actually easier on your dress form if you have a dress form you just pin your bodies to it and then you place it on it but in case you don't have a dress form i'm just going to be illustrating how you should pin them so if you have like a picture you are following you just put your picture by your side and then you pin it so now in pin in sewing it I will not sew up to this part. Remember, I said that you don't want your because we cut it in straight form. You don't want your design to be flat around the fact, If not for crinoline, you can see when we cut it on our template, it was just flat. If not for crinoline, that is helping it to bounce like this, we would have had something flat. So when I'm sewing this, I'll just sew up to the tip. I'll leave. I'll not sew up to this close point here. I'll just sew up to around maybe one inch away from the tip. So I'm starting from the smallest one, and then remember I said it starts from the waist area. So now I'm going to pin it like this, and then stop it around here. So after placing placing, so I'm going to sew it down like this. Then I'll pick the next one which is number five i'll fold it into two and then remember you are sewing on the straight part so irrespective of how you close this if your seam line is is showing outside it's still not going to show because that's what you're going to sew down so number five i'm going to start it from this end point also and then i'll sew it up to the this point around here so you can see the way i'm arranging it 
okay so i've done my hair to sew these two down as you can see it is stuck now i just placed it on it and then i sew it down okay so now on this point and this point you can just tack it together so that they can lay flat like this so you can start from this smallest one upwards or from the biggest one depending on how you choose to do it but i just prefer to start from this shortest one so that i can see how it is progressing then i can follow it anyhow i want so now this is the fourth one okay remember we have one two three four five six so if you are counting from the smallest it's going to be the third so i'm just going to place this upward now and then i'll place it underneath it also and then i'll sew it down but remember what i'm sewing i'm not going to sew to the upper part here okay so i'll place this now and then sew it down also so and then i'll see what i have so the original line that i drew is still there but it's faint so that is what i'm following that is what is guiding me so once i place this now and then i sew it down i know this is what i have and if i'm okay with the design i'm just going to follow it like that and then the next one so we are now left with the three last one which is of equal sizes so you just place it now underneath it also and then you see what you have so like i said if you have a dress form this becomes easier for you so as you are placing it you just sew it down okay but if you don't have a dress form this is another way you can do this so you can see how i am placing this so you can spread it anyhow you want anyhow you want it you can spread it it doesn't have to follow a particular form so basically this is what i'm trying to achieve so everything you have done here i hope you can see this so you can see how we have it so you can either sew this down or tack it down so everything that we've done on this side you are going to be replicating it on the other side also because of course it has to be the same so the same way you just start it like that so it will make the beauty come out even more so if you have any space in between them what you just need to do now is pick this and this tag them somewhere in the middle so that it can be continuous and they are not going to be seeing any space in between so i'll go ahead now and do this then bring it back to show us but you can see how lovely this is looking so i've gone ahead to sew all of them together now as you can see so now anyone that you can also sew like this tip that is too that you can tack it down so that everything just falls underneath each other like this and then you will notice that i have my starting line okay the line that i started with remember i measured four inches upwards here before i bent my hand and everything just have to follow smoothly like this so you can see what i have here so if my machine cannot take anyone just sew the one you can sew then you can use your needle and thread to tack later so here now you can just pick the first one and the next one tack it somewhere here so that you have something continuous so like i said it is easier if you have a mannequin or dress form to work with but i just want to do this manually so that anybody that does not have a mannequin or dress form can still follow this and be able to create something this beautiful so now i'll go ahead now and take this to the mannequin so that we can see the fit on the mannequin okay so this is it on the mannequin and you can see that it just follows this line from the four inches here before it and everything has to connect like this you can see what we have here and then here you can decide to just tack the ends together so from one end to another you can tack it around here so that they can be continuous so see what we have so everything that we have done on this side you just need to replicate it on the other side and you can place this anyhow you want it so if you is any place you are not comfortable with you can just tack it but if you place this using your dress form it makes the work easier for you so you can see how beautiful and lovely this design is looking so and the hem here you can actually bead it if they want to add trimming like this but if you adding trimming just makes the work easier i hope you enjoyed making this tutorial with me if you enjoyed this let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i will see you in the next one bye